I'm very curious how many of you guys even noticed it when watching Nmix's music video. As part of the lead up to Nmix's official comeback, the girls just released a music video for their song Young Dumb Stupid from their upcoming album. While the sampling of a famous nursery rhyme made it a very interesting song, something else made it a very interesting music video. One of the outfits worn by Hyewon featured four words on her shirt where the acronym spelled out I'm not gonna say it. That being said, or I guess not said, I don't think there was any backlash. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of fans found it hilarious. Some even bought the shirt, and many are wondering what Lily thought when she saw it. Regardless, JYP Entertainment didn't seem to take it as lightly because it has now been edited with the last two words removed. But of all the things that were removed this week, this was probably the less offensive one to fans. In the last video, we talked about the recent live stream where BTS's Jungkook said that while he appreciates the love fans always shower him with so much, following him around during his private time or tracking down and showing up to his live stream locations is just not right. Even bringing up a recent example that took place while he was working out at the gym. Well, after that live stream, a talk show in Mexico brought up this topic, suggesting that Jungkook was attacking his own fans, preventing them from doing basic things like going to the gym, saying he was too drunk to even know what he was talking about, and at one point brought up a crew member to pretend he was Jungkook and mocking him. They were apparently so proud of the segment that they clipped it out and posted it all over their social media with the caption, our own Mexican BTS. Obviously, this didn't sit well with people as the show was called out for being unprofessional and even racist. While an apology was being demanded, the only response we got from the show at the time of this recording was them taking down the clip from their social media. And I think Hybe has been way too busy to address something like this as they've been focused on SM Entertainment and things like protest trucks outside their building. It's been a few videos since we talked about the SM Entertainment situation, but the story has now entered a new chapter. News broke that after many negotiations, Hybe and Kakao have now mutually settled things, as Hybe will now discontinue the acquisition process of SM Entertainment after considering the negative impact it would have on their shareholders' value, leaving the door open for Kakao, who will reportedly purchase 35% of the shares, becoming its largest share. Shareholder. Kakao will now bring on a board of directors to operate SM and manage his business, while Hai will cooperate on quote, platform related matters. SM Entertainment themselves responded to all of this with a statement saying they will use this agreement as an opportunity to move full speed ahead with their SM 3.0 vision as promised. Along with the news of this settlement, if you've seen In the Name of God, A Holy Betrayal, you know there's something else currently sweeping the Korean entertainment industry. To fully understand the crazy cult situation and accusations involving DKZ member Kyung Yoon, we would have to dive into the new Netflix documentary that exposes cult leaders and self-proclaimed prophets in Korea, along with the horrible atrocities they committed against their followers, now leading to a public hunt for anyone with suspected cult connections. However, I'm just going to briefly explain why Kyung Yoon in particular is being talked about within all of this. See, the JMS cult was especially disturbing as their leader was said to have sexually assaulted his followers. It was then pointed out that the cafe Kyung Yoon's family operated was on a list associating them with a local church belonging to that cult. Soon after, DKZ's company came out confirming that his parents were indeed part of the church, but had already cut ties immediately once they discovered the truth and were horrified. Despite the response, more suspicions emerged now speculating Kyung Yoon's knowledge of this after clips of him talking about his pastor aunt came to light and even a painting he once showed of a tree growing from a rock that many say looks very similar to the one located at the cult leader's hometown and a significant symbol for them. Well, yesterday, Dispatch released an interview where Kyung Yoon confessed to being a victim of the JMS cult since he was young. How and why his family got involved, being unknowingly brainwashed bit by bit, he made sure to clarify that he has never spoken about it or tried to get anyone involved, including the members, anyone at his company, or the fans. It's a very, very intensive interview involving his parents as well, but he does notably state that he is severing ties with the church as of now. I'm not sure where Kyung Yoon and DKZ go from here or when we'll see them next, and we probably won't be seeing Nam Tae Hyun for a while either. A few nights ago, Nam Tae Hyun was taken in by police for drunk driving. It was said that while he was parked on the side of the road, he opened his door at one point, which hit a passing taxi, and then later moved his car despite the collision. When police were dispatched to the scene and gave him a breathalyzer test, it was reportedly enough for license 
cancellation. Although Taehyun's company did clarify that he simply moved his car because it was blocking someone else's vehicle while he was waiting for a designated driver and had promised compensation to the owner of the taxi after he made sure they were okay. Taehyun was too severely intoxicated at the time to be questioned, but has now come out with an apology, stating that there's no excuse for his mistake and will self-reflect and repent. Thankfully, nobody got hurt in that situation, and we're also lucky nobody got hurt during Treasure's recent arrival to the airport. Treasure just came back from kicking off their Asia tour with their fans in Taipei, but unlike the calm, peaceful, and organized welcome they got when they arrived in Taiwan, their return to Seoul was filled with the chaos that we've sadly come to expect and constantly see. The pushing and mobbing got so bad that the little security that was there couldn't stop the members from getting shoved around. The sad thing is that this is something that has been visibly frustrating the members from even before they officially debuted due to their fame from their survival show, to member Do Young getting hurt by getting pushed into a door, to just a few months ago where even the staff were heard screaming for help. Finally, it was unfortunately announced that due to her father's recent passing, Kepler's Young Eun will now be with her family for a while and will not be joining the group's upcoming activities, most likely including their comebacks set for April. But luckily, we have so much positive to celebrate in K-pop as well. Look at the Empire State Building, lit up in Twice's colors to celebrate their comeback like a gigantic candy bong. Of course, Twice came back this week with Set Me Free, among all the other official Korean comebacks that have taken place since the last video like Kai's solo. Besides comebacks, we also just got a surprise announcement regarding a near future debut. Recently, SM Entertainment announced that after NCT Tokyo, there would be no more new additions to the NCT family. However, that apparently didn't mean we wouldn't be getting new subunits because it has now been confirmed that a new NCT subunit will debut with Do Young, Jaehyun, and Jungwoo who are currently preparing their debut album. Last year, B.I. told his fans that he didn't mind and would even cover for them if he sees them getting caught sneaking in cameras into his concerts. Well, it looks like B.I. is a man of his word because during his recent show in Indonesia, while that fan was getting dragged out for that very thing, B.I. stopped mid-performance to tell security that no one is allowed to leave until the show is over. And shout out to the backup dancer who kept Blackpink's Indonesia show going despite a wardrobe malfunction. During Rose's solo performance, she thankfully caught her dress just in time that had come undone but still kept singing as he helped her as quickly as he could. Jenny also had her own wardrobe situation when the wind created this Marilyn Monroe moment. Of course, we have to bring up the thing everyone was buzzing about this past week, the interaction between actor Park Sojun, who's also about to star in the Marvels, and Blackpink's Jenny at Chanel's show during Paris Fashion Week. So many talked about moments between these two from her avoiding quote-unquote scandals, which made them both laugh, resulting in this hilarious hoverhand situation here, to this moment where Jenny asked if he was smiling, and his answer caught her so off guard that she started laughing again, causing Park Sojun to pull a classic K-drama maneuver and cover her while she got herself together. But that wasn't the only Blackpink headline in the past few days, as they have broken the Guinness World Record to become Spotify's most streamed girl group of all time, surpassing British group Little Mix. New Jeans, of course, have also just broken a Spotify record, actually held by Blackpink's Lisa, who reached 1 billion streams in 411 days, as the five girls have now reached 1 billion views in the fastest amount of time in just 219 days. Guinness World Records just updated Spotify's most streamed group of all time title, which belongs to BTS who nearly doubled the previous record held by none other than BTS. We just talked about Espa being the first K-pop group to ever perform at the upcoming prestigious Governor's Ball Music Festival in New York this June. Well, they will now also be the first K-pop group to ever perform at the Outside Lands Festival in San Francisco this August. Speaking of first-evers, now, I know XG is a Japanese group, but with them being very into 
integrated into the K-pop industry, performing on the Korean music show circuit, not just a one-off, and of course their label mate Hikaru being a member of a very prominent K-pop group Kepler, I think it's fair they can be brought up with so much connective tissue. That being said, congrats to the girls for being the first ever Japanese girl group to chart on the US radio top 40 list. With the amazing music they've been releasing, they absolutely deserve it. If for some reason you haven't heard them, whenever you do, you'll instantly fall for them. I actually love Chisa, so I hope she's okay.